All right, we're coming to you Brokeback style. Hello! <laughs> Maya has joined us for today's video. Uh, we're gonna talk to you today about my buck I shot this year. I don't know what we are calling him since we thought it was Clifford, is what we had named him, but two days after I shot said Clifford, another deer that looked exactly like him, all of this, I mean, I think they're twins. Yep. Showed up on camera and we're like, what the? I, so we don't know who this deer is. Nah, we're, Hopefully, we're, we're, I think we have Clifford 1 and Clifford 2. Yeah, we're, we're interested because as soon as I saw it, I was like, that's Clifford. <laughs> and Anthony's like, his antlers look darker, though. Yeah, and I'm so, like, bro, I don't, it doesn't make sense. It, ah. makes, it makes no freaking sense. And then we were convinced. We we're like, that's Clifford. Clifford's dead. And then he just wanted to pop back yeah. up in and we're like, what? Yeah. So we'll put these two pictures here. You guys let us know below which deer you think this is that uh I don't freaking that anthony got yeah. this year so yeah anyway a little backstory so this was uh part of my rutcation with my old man this year we tried to take a week or two off uh during the rut uh it was a brutal hot week and the night before there was a huge cold snap and i went out seven in the morning got it done uh as you'll find out it was a little back and we actually called in a dog and the rest is history so i hope you guys enjoy the video Please like and subscribe, and don't make too much fun of our hats, I guess. Later. Freaking butt. 
bust it right away. I went and bust it right away. I got to high pine this tree the whole time, so I got a bow here. And then I moved my bow over here, and I freaking, I think I, I think the shot's a little low, a little back. But he's, he should die, he should die. <sighs> I'm gonna give him some time. It's seven in the morning. I know he's either gonna come that way or he's gonna come into that shooting lane that I have prepped. Sure shit, comes back around this way. And like you said, when you shot yours, I could have pulled 200 pounds. <laughs> I told you! <him. laughs> You're like, you <laughs> I'm like, I'm lucky I didn't pull the string off of the fucking boat. I'm like, oh my God. If I, if I, if my buck fever isn't too bad, it's a really dark chocolate, which that's not anything we have. Nope. Oh my gosh, Anthony. Yeah, I need I need a beer. Not at 8 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning. Fuck it. What time did you shoot? Don't. I told you, Tuesday and Friday. God, he's big. Yeah, it's a little back. Yeah. Dude, that's Clifford. Good boy. 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 Oh. Dude, that's Clifford. I think it is. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh. It's not. It's not Philly. He's, he's still out there for you. Guys. I mean, this oh, is my God. biggest buck today for sure. Kind of glass are all fogged up. Biggest buck today for sure. Marginal hit. Um, I mean, what can I say? He he was on the blood trail like, right away though. But we just had to point him in the right direction and. He freaking walked us right to it. I mean, we've been out here for, to the impact site for like 10 minutes. <laughs> there you, Hanky. Two, two yeah. beds, and he's freaking down, man. Now we got some real work to do. <laughs> get this sucker out of here. There ain't no trails or nothing, really. So we're gonna have to call the old man, get the four wheeler out here. I'm freaking pumped, man. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. No problem, man. Freaking A. Woo hoo hoo! All right, I gotta send some pictures out, man. You All right, guys. Well, it's the morning after. It's November 12th. Uh, I shot this deer on November 11th at 7:07 .07 in the morning. So this is a is a buck that we had named Clifford. I actually bumped this deer from his summer bed um, about 60 yards away from where I was walking. I was looking for some 
uh, tree stand locations and maybe some trail camera locations to start finding these bucks. And I remember seeing this giant racked velvet antler deer and big body and I was just like, all right, well, game on now. You know, hopefully we can see him this fall. One of the big parts that actually helped us a ton throughout this year was uh, making the switch to WiseEye trail cameras. The one thing that's really nice about these is that their app is just incredible. You can name the deer, it tags them by, by date, barometric pressure, temperature, um, trail camera location, time, all that stuff. And when you're trying to pattern these deer, you can go into the app, search the tag the deer. So we named this deer Clifford, so you just go in, find Clifford, and then it'll give you all the information you need to, to try to help harvest this deer. Uh, that was definitely a big key to, to help um, find this deer and, and kind of know his general area. Another thing to note about those two is the picture quality is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Um, we had troubles in the past with other cameras that, you know, they would be extremely blurry. Uh, it would get a lot of misfires. We have not had a single problem with any of these cameras. So that was definitely a, a key role in, in helping us harvest this animal. Another big piece of our success was uh, implementing domain food plots. So we don't actually have a lot of egg uh, in this general area. Um, so implementing these, I think we have two and a half total acres of food on our 110 piece um, chunk of land here in Burnett County. And implementing these food plots, we have seen our deer numbers absolutely explode. Um, we've, we've started to see a lot more of these mature animals after a couple years of, you know, passing them and letting them grow. And this is kind of a, a key example of that right here. And there, there hasn't been a better experience that I personally have with a company. Uh, Mike from Domain has been an, a massive help. Any question I have, I've sent him all of our soil samples. He just sends me back, plant this, plant um, this way, and here's the amount of fertilizer and stuff you need. And they've been a huge part in our success um, going forward, and we are excited to, to continue that relationship. Another big piece that, that helped put all this together was being mobile. So Todd from A1 Archery in Hudson, Wisconsin recommended that I use uh, a saddle this year and I, I kind of was hesitant. I've always been a, you know, a tree stand guy and so I, you know, I figured anything to help my odds, I'm going to do it. So I actually, he actually hooked me up with a trophy line saddle um, and a big piece of this was we had hung a different stand about 30 yards away from where I was actually sitting but watching these these deer move through this general area I just knew that there's no way I'm going to get a shot at, at these animals where that tree stand is located so I actually just moved straight west about 30 yards and I was able to position myself behind the tree while he was making his way back and forth trying to figure out what was going on and I could just flip over to the other side of the tree and waited for him to get in my shooting lanes and and make a shot and it was it was piece of cake for the swacker. I mean, that thing, it was a straight liver hit, uh, poured blood everywhere. It was like a, it was a crime seed. We could just see the dark blood. And um, so that was a big help. I'm glad I got to use that. Um, another big thing that, that I'm glad we did and as hard as it is, is just backing out right away. So I knew that the hit was marginal. I knew the deer was gonna die. I just, you can't be dumb and push these deer. You're gonna run them forever. So as soon as I made the shot, I knew it wasn't perfect. I saw the arrow still in him when he was running away, so I knew it wasn't a pass through. I figured most likely liver, maybe some guts, maybe I clipped a lung, I'm not sure. Um, so I just made the decision. I, I talked to my, my old man and all my buddies and, and they're like, dude, you gotta back out. And I know how hard it is, but so we backed out, waited, I think it was eight or nine hours and we actually called Trevor. Um, he's out of Luck, Wisconsin, and I'll, I'll give you his contact info in, in the description here. And he brought his dog Hank out, and as soon as he found the first blood, it was five or ten minutes until we had we had our hands on this buck. So that was a astronomically big piece into harvesting this animal. Is just back out, don't bump them, let the deer do its thing. Unfortunately, it was you know not as quick of a as an expiring thing as I as I would like, but you know we got the job done. So that's that's what I'm really thankful for. And and on top of all of it, I mean. As, as much as we can say, the, the work is, you know, it puts it all together to, at the end of the day for, for you to get this opportunity. I, to me, the way I look at it is it's, it's all God for me. Um, he, he's the one who's blessed me, blessed me and my family and my friends with, you know, healthy bodies, you know, su successful careers and, and the, just the opportunity to, to chase these animals. It's just, 
it's so rewarding and I know it, it's all him. Um, I, I just, I can't, I can go on and on about that, but it's, it's definitely helped me strengthen my relationship with God and, and my family and my friends and my girlfriend. Um, but I just couldn't be any more pleased to, to wrap my tag around this animal and we're going to get him cleaned up and get a nice shoulder mount on him. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys like this video, please just like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and we're hoping to have another buck down by the end of the year. So thanks a lot.